Did you know that your TI-84 will solve equations for you? I'm gonna show you this and so much more so you can ace your next math test. The first one is the numeric solver and it lives in your math menu. So I'm gonna click the math menu over here in the left-hand column. So I go to math. I know it's towards the bottom of my list. So I think the easiest way to get there is by hitting that up arrow. So I'm gonna hit the up arrow and there is my numeric solver then enter. Now, if your screen looks a little bit different than mine, never fear. You'll still be able to use the equation solver. It's just a little bit different. Take a look down below at my description. I've got some links to some great videos that will step you through. Now, let's say that I want to solve this equation. We've got 3x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to x plus 10. So the equation 1 and the equation 2 are really those two sides of the equation. Let's go ahead and type this in. So I'm going to go 3. I'm going to hit my x variable. So x. I'm going to hit my squared. And then I want um, plus x. So plus x minus 2. This is the first equation or the first side. Let's arrow down. And I'm ready for the second side, which was x plus 10. So x plus 10. Notice that that OK popped up in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to click that by just clicking on the button below OK. Now it's going to ask you for two pieces of information. That first one next to the X is going to be your guess at a solution. This is a degree two equation. So I know that there are two solutions. The calculator can only give me one at a time. So my guess is going to allow it to hone in on one of the solutions. So let's just guess five totally pick that at random. The next one is the bound. Right now, this is basically negative infinity to infinity. I'm going to leave it there so you don't need to worry about the bound. Now that button in the lower right hand corner of my screen says solve. So I'm going to click the button right below there and it says solve. And my answer is two. So two is one of my solutions. But I know that there's a second solution. Let's do this again by typing in another guess. I'm going to type in, say, a negative number this time. So I'm just going to, again, totally guessing, negative 3. I'm not going to worry about the bound. So I'm ready to click Solve. So let's click that Graph button for Solve. And it did give me another solution. If it happened to give you two again, go ahead and just try a different guess but I've got my degree two equation and my two solutions, no factoring, no quadratic formula necessary. Let me start by exiting the equation solver. And I do that by hitting my second button followed by mode for second quit. So second and then quit. Okay, so my next life changing tip are fractions in the calculator. Now your calculator will only give you answers in terms of a decimal. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to do 80 divided by 70. So 80 divided by 70, it gives me this decimal, 1.14 blah, blah, blah. But I wanted it as a fraction instead. To get it into a fraction, I'm gonna to go to my math menu and the very first option there is convert to fraction. So you can hit the number one or since it's highlighted, I can just choose enter, choose enter again and it gives me the reduced fraction. This is also how you can add and subtract fractions. Let's say that we wanted to do something like one half minus, um, let's do seven sixths. Enter. Okay, so we get this answer. Again, this answer is in decimal form. I can go to the math menu and then hit enter for convert to fraction and then enter again, but there's actually a simpler way. Let's navigate back up to that fraction subtraction. So if I hit my up arrow, I can go back through my options and then hit enter. So I did this just because I want to show you how you can grab a previous input. But you can also just type this in, don't hit enter. What we're going to do is convert it to a fraction all in one step. Let's go to the math menu and then convert to fraction and then enter and it automatically gives me the negative two thirds. The other thing that this calculator is amazing at 
is reducing fractions. Let's say that you had the fraction, I don't know, 48 over, what could it be? 48 over 108. And you wanted to reduce this fraction. To reduce it, I'm just gonna ask the calculator to math menu, convert to fraction. And it gives me the reduced form, life-changing, right? There's one more way to access fractions on your calculator, and it is the F1 button here that you see on the Y equals key. So to get there, you would hit the alpha button followed by F1, just another way to access some of these tools. Let's quit, second quit, and we're back to the home screen for tip number three. Let's say that you've got this pretty ugly function and you need to figure out the value at five. Well, you could type it all in, right? Replacing X with a five, or you can use this really cool feature on the calculator. I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna graph it. So go to Y equals. Now I've got plot one on. I do not want a statistical plot. Yours probably isn't chosen, but mine is. So I'm gonna arrow up and then hit enter to unhighlight. Okay, so none of the plots are highlighted. I am going to clear, just hitting the clear button, clear the function that I had in there. So this is Y equals. We can imagine this as F of X equals. So we have 12 times the square root, so second square root of x, let's arrow to get outside of the square root, and then we're gonna do minus five x squared and plus um, seven um, x. To evaluate this, we're gonna to go to the calc menu and that calc menu is right above trace. So the fourth button over, it's in blue. So I'm gonna go second followed by calc. So many amazing things that it can do. It can find the zero, which is an X intercept, minimums, maximums, but we're gonna do the value. Let's hit enter. Now my graph is already in the standard viewing screen. If yours isn't, you wanna to get to that standard viewing screen. So you would hit zoom and then zoom standard, which is number six, number six. Okay, I was already there. So we're gonna go back to calc, second calc. And I wanna find the value when X is equal to five. So X equals what? X is equal to five. And it gives me that value of, what is that? Negative 63.1671, on and on and on. Next, let's find the value when X is equal to one. I could go back to calc and do this again, but I really just wanna plug in the number one. It remembers that I'm in value and it says, oh, you want X equals one? Yes, please. And the value at one is 14. Not only is this a great time saver, but it's also a great mistake saver. You're gonna love tip number four, but I am saving the absolute very best tip for the end. Tip number four is an amazing way to solve systems of equations. I make sure that all of my pre-calc students and my calc students know how to use this tool, but if you're taking an algebra class, you should know how to use this tool also. We're gonna solve this system of two linear equations. Now you'll notice that I already have it set up. So I've got the X's first, the Y's second, the equal sign next, and the numbers on the other side. So you wanna make sure that you've got it set up that way, and then you're ready to put it into a matrix. In order to put it into the matrix, I am just gonna use the numbers, just the coefficients. We're gonna go into that matrix menu. So second, followed by matrix, and we wanna edit a matrix. So arrowing over to edit, and then enter. Now, my system of equations has two equations. So I'm gonna put a two first, enter, and it has three coefficients or three terms, right? The X, the Y, and the constant. So I want a three next. Really, you wanna make sure that you have enough spaces for all of your coefficients. Let's put in the coefficients for our first equation. We had a two, so two, enter, and then we had a three, enter, and then a 12 enter and then it moves right down to the next row these are the coefficients for my second equation in that second equation we had a one since it was just x one x we had a negative two so i'm going to use that little negative down by my enter key so a negative two 
enter and on the other side of the equals, we had a negative one, negative one, enter. What we wanna do is to ask the calculator to do, oh my gosh, row reduced echelon form. You do not need to know what that means. You just need to remember that you're looking for R, R, E, F. It's worth it. Okay, so let's quit here. So I'm gonna go second followed by quit. I wanna find the solution using my matrix. So back to our matrix menu, second matrix. But this time I wanna do some math, right? I wanna solve this. Arrowing over to math, I am looking for R, R, E, F. It is not here. I know it's down towards the bottom of that list. Let's arrow up. So I'm gonna arrow up and arrow up until I see there it is B, R, R, E, F. And then we're gonna hit enter. I promise this is worth it. Next, it wants to know the name of the matrix. Okay, so back to our matrix menu, second matrix. The name of that matrix is A. Notice that I've got names as that first submenu. A is already highlighted, so I can just hit enter from here. So row reduced echelon form of A. Here comes the very best part. I'm gonna hit enter. These are my solutions. If I interpret that first row, the first column, those were my X's. So it says one X equals three, X equals three. And then one Y equals two, Y equals two. A few steps, but solving a system of equations, I would argue is more steps. And finally, for the most amazing tip, not that all of those weren't great, is tip number five, and that is our polynomial solver. We're gonna solve the equation that we solved at the very, very beginning, but using this better tool instead. If you wanted to clear this, you could. I'm going to just so it looks nice and neat by hitting that clear button. I wanna to go to a poly solver. So most of your calculators have a poly solver on them. We just did the equation, but the poly solver is even better. So the poly solver lives in apps. The apps menu is right here next to the math menu. Let's hit apps. It is not obvious which one is your poly solver because it actually does several different things, but it's number seven. So it's a poly solver. It'll solve equations simultaneously, which would be a system of equations. It is number seven. So let's arrow down to number seven. Now, if for some reason your calculator doesn't have it on here, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below so you can learn how to update your calculator. But mine does. So I am gonna hit enter to choose this. So I've got two different options here. The other ones are just some help options. We want the polynomial root finder. So I'm gonna hit number one. A polynomial root finder means that you've got an equation set equal to zero that you're solving. So you're solving for roots. Graphically, those would be x-intercepts. Our polynomial happens to be degree two, so it's gonna be a degree two. I do want the real solutions only, although it will find you complex solutions. We want everything else as is. I'm not worried about radians or degrees because there's no trig functions in here. We're ready to hit next, which is the graph button. Now I did a little math on the equation that we solved at the very beginning of this video so that we can use the polynomial root solver. In order to use that, we need zero on one side. So I went ahead and subtracted the X and I subtracted the 10 to end up with this equation. Let's put in these coefficients. We don't have one as the coefficient on the X squared term, that coefficient is three. So I'm gonna hit three and then enter. And then it wants to know the sign in between. This is three X squared plus zero X. So I'm gonna go ahead and put plus. So I'm gonna do plus and then enter. And I do want zero here. So zero and then enter. So it's just stepping me through. So zero and then enter. I'm subtracting that 12. So I'm gonna hit my subtraction key followed by enter. And then I want a 12 followed by enter. Now it's ready to solve. Notice we've got three X squared plus there's no X's minus 12 equals zero. If I hit solve, it gives me both solutions at the same time. There's that two and the negative two that we were looking for. The five tips that we just covered is just a super small sampling of all that this calculator can do. Subscribe so that you don't miss out on more.